Lesson 13 is relatively straightforward. It's pretty easy, actually. Um, here, let's start with some foundational background information in that when you have an amine and you add an alkyl halide, basically, you can very, it's very difficult to um, stop this reaction. Once alkyl halide is in its reach, it will react and react and react and react again until you end up with a quaternary ammonium salt. Well, we can actually use that to our advantage when it comes to making the Hoffman elimination happen, which is a non zaitsev elimination product. Here we can take an amine and add an alkyl halide, giving you a quaternary ammonium salt. And in the presence of heat and base, bam, there's your elimination product. So this is something that you wouldn't normally see because you are attempting to um, add an alkyl halide to a nitrogen, but note that that's nothing like what you even have in your product. So that's something to consider here. Here's another example. So if we have this happen, there's your quaternary ammonium salt, in base and heat, you actually end up with something that we would not have in another case. You end up with a non zaitsev elimination instead of this. Here's what the transition state looks like. You have the OH coming and grabbing that hydrogen, and then that's moving over, and then that's leaving. And that's how you end up with this product. So the big question is here, why in the world does it go to the least substituted? Well, nitrogen is not a very good leaving group. So as you have this OH come and grab that hydrogen, it kind of makes sort of like a partial negative charge on the carbon that's involved. And then the nitrogen sort of leaves afterwards. And less substituted carbanions are technically more stable, slightly at least. Um, and so you also have some steric hindrances happening here. I don't know that that's 100% satisfying as an answer. Um, but that is something that seems to occur, and that's why we sort of have to understand what this reaction is. Thank you very much.